Buhari woos Nigerians in the diaspora. At the heels his second term, President Muhammadu Buhari's initiative programs to energize the Nigerians in the diaspora relationship with the Nigerian government. With the sole aim of utilizing the collective strength of all Nigerians at home and abroad to facilitate nation building, enhance Nigeria's relationship and image with other countries. This view was at the core of its recently concluded Nigerian Diaspora Leadership Conference held at the New Millennium Hotel, New York, New York. The two-day high-powered conference, tagged Uniting Diaspora Leaders for National Development, draws hundreds of successful Nigerian community leaders from across the United States to the city of New York. The conference is organized by the Consulate General of Nigeria in New York, the Nigerian Consulate in Atlanta, and the Embassy of Nigeria in Washington, D.C. Leaders of Nigerian organizations, including the Nigerians in Diaspora Organization, NIDO, Organization for the Advancement of Nigerians, OAN, Nigerian American Business Forum, NABF, and several youth associations were highly represented at the event. In his welcome address, the Consul General of Nigeria in New York, Mr. Ben Okoyen, who is highly elated at the turnout at the event, commends the extent of the Nigerian diaspora's commitment and concern for the progress and development of their country. Yeah. I have the honor to welcome everyone to this conference. The objective of this conference is to foster unity and cooperation among diaspora leaders. We have invited high level of government officials and professionals who are dedicated to the unity of the diverse Nigerian diaspora population for genuine national development. It is our hope that the participants will utilize this unique platform to share experiences and thoughts on the objectives of this conference. The Nigerian envoy commends President Muhammadu Buhari for signing the Nigeria Diaspora Commission NIDCOM bill into law. Nigeria's permanent representative to the United Nations, Professor Tijani Mohamed Bande, challenges Nigeria diasporas to remember where they came from. But really the function of connecting ourselves to focus on what is important. It is really, it's almost every day. Every day we know, we know the potential is there. It's not the potential now. What we need to do is really to better connect ourselves in a more systematic way. I mean, from the whole question of debates concerning whether we need uh, an advisor to deal with the diaspora, we are talking of a commission, which is that we are going in the direction of having a systematic approach to how we connect well to the diaspora. But let me just say this. It's not really, the diaspora is not doing a favor to Nigeria. Nigeria is demanding that you remember where you came from. The senior special assistant to the President on Foreign Affairs and Diaspora Matters, Mrs. Abike Dabiri Irewa, stresses the need for unity for the mandate of NIDCOM to be realized. And in 2018, we have the largest remittances from you, our brothers and sisters in the diaspora. We're talking about $28 billion that you contributed to the Nigerian economy. This is not including the uh, $10 here, and I'm going back now. Join yourself. We will me give uh, so 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 twenty dollars. It's not part of that. So you are a force that must be reckoned with. What you have done, if you look at it literally, that's about eighty percent of the Nigerian budget. If you calculate that to trillions, we're talking about how many trillions now? Uh, who, who is going to be mathematics? <laughs> well, there's a lot you all can do, especially in agriculture, where President Bright is focused on non-oil revenue. 
There's so much you can do. So we have that investment summit. We hope to have it again this year. And I hope that you all will participate or your friends will participate. Other speakers at the event include Consul General of Nigeria in Atlanta, Mrs. Aishatu Musa, Nigeria's ambassador in Washington, D.C., retired Justice Sylvanus Nsofor, the deputy head of mission at the embassy, Ambassador Hassan Hassan, the permanent observer of African Union to the United Nations, Ms. Fatima Kiari Mohammed, and deputy permanent representative of Nigeria to the United Nations, Ambassador Samson Itegboje. Some of the topics in discuss at the conference are the importance of the Nigeria Diaspora Commission to national development, the role of the diasporas for national development, investment opportunities in Nigeria, and harnessing the human resource wealth in diaspora. The two-day conference also witnesses guest speakers, including the Permanent Secretary, Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Mr. Gabriel Aduda, the Executive Secretary, Ms. Yawande Sadiku, who spoke on what the Nigerian government is doing to leverage on the diaspora potential. Where opportunities lie. Opportunities also exist in trade, which is the second biggest you know, component of uh, GDP. But information and communication um, uh, services. And this is where I see a lot of the potential of the youth being harnessed in the context of uh, entrepreneurship. There are two, there are three areas which I think the government should put effort and put the aspiration should move in. One area, even though you mentioned it the other day, there can be no question that the energy production in Nigeria is, is adequate. Nigeria is three times the population of South Africa, but South Africa produces six, six times more the energy than Nigeria does. So we need to scale up on energy. The second area is water. Now this will come as a surprise, but I have, I have a very bold proposal on this. If there is one area where Nigeria needs to invest and where the diaspora can bring that technical capacity to bear is water. Uh, thank you. Uh, and like you said, I think it's one area that people, the government needs to look into considerably because that's where you can catch the youth the most. And they are doing exceedingly uh, amazing work in promoting Nigeria because the only way you promote the Nigerian culture and the narrative that people begin to pay attention and they want to go back and invest money into that community. So, um, the assurance. Do not allow anybody to fool us. Nigeria is open for business. Nigeria is the place to be. And let's look at the numbers. The foreign debt direct investment opportunities around the world last year was 1.6 trillion. Nigeria got 3.2 billion. In Africa, we got 52 billion investment attracted to Africa. Nigeria got 3.2 billion. That's less than 3%. Where are we? That's an opportunity. Number two, it was just released two days ago by the Federal Minister of Finance. They raised, they went for an European bond for 2.8 billion by the Federal Government all throughout last year. That bond was oversubscribed by 9.6 billion. Where is it to be? Are there not people looking to Nigeria? Don't let us be deceived. Nigeria is the place to be. Not only are we harnessing the potential of those that are in the diaspora, but it's replicative and it's a reflection of the potential that is being harnessed in Nigeria. That's the only way that we can now bow together on a collective effort and move the country forward. The aspect of it is that I think we need to how to improve service quality too at the embassies, which was already addressed by the gentleman back then. The other one is that we can create a Diaspora Project Exchange Platform, whereby uh, Diaspora can, officials in Nigeria or institutions in Nigeria can have so many projects they have over there. And then on that platform, they can look at those projects, like World Bank projects. Look at them, I like them, and begin to engage directly on that platform. It has to be managed by people that actually run, they can offer services for free, like consultants, not government officials. Because this is what they do for living. So they can look at so many strategies, creating them, and also to how to manage those processes and all that, and advise accordingly. I wanted to say that one problem we have as a people is our refusal to hand over to the next 
more active generation. You see, basically right now, I do enough to help myself as a person with a computer, but what my children know, they can actually turn my world around. See, what we are discussing about this, um, this commission, if we can get the youths who have the ability, the competence to compete out there, to handle the, uh, the connection between here and Nigeria, they can do much more better. They can do much more better. So we have to have the confidence to allow our young soldiers to carry on the back. Thank you very much. To start discussion among all of us, I think there will be selective Nigerians who have forum between their diasporans and those politicians in Nigeria. If we can, if they can have discussion with all of us, what we want to deliver to Nigeria, and what room can they afford to all of us? Because many of them are very, very angry to see us. Many of them, not all of them, Many of them, they have mindset that that mindset has to be changed. We are not going to Nigeria to take um, palm trees and oil from them because many of them don't plant any, any, anything. All they depend on the same oil that eroding our nation. So we really have to start creating um, a dialogue. How can we help? and how much room can they give us? Thank you so much. How can we reduce bribing when people come to state government and try to implement projects? That's my oh, I appreciate you putting this together, and I came from Atlanta. See my console right there with me. Oh, my question is, you invited leaders to be here in terms of being part of this commission. And most of us, we have these organizations where we have different initiatives to impact lives back home. How can this commission help? For instance, our organization, our initiative is building solar power, portable wells all over the River Rhine community. Dr. Bola Omotosho, the editorial board chairman of New Africa Broadcasting Network, who led a team of reporters from NABN TV to the conference, interviewed some of the participants. But the point is, we are bigger than Philippines, but the Philippines is generating more uh, revenue, more foreign exchange for their country, remitting more money to, to their country, Philippines, than Nigeria because their government is standing behind that program. And in the Philippines, they call it Balik Bayans. Balik Bayan is a term they use for Filipino ex nationals that lived overseas and came back to invest in the Philippines. Okay. So because their government is backing that up, I figured the way we can do the same thing is for our government to give attention, aggressively give attention to our, because we have so much potential that can add value to, 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 to that commission. So my thing is, uh, the, the, the problem is not with the diaspora. The problem is creating the enabling environment. So let them go ahead and create a commission and then bring in Nigerians in the diaspora to help them to create the enabling environment. Then we know that Nigeria is now ready for diaspora Nigerians to come and invest. The, the commission is a one-stop one -stop center for issues on the diaspora. It's a place where diasporans can now channel their resources and then they, uh, uh, help to package their resources and help government to implement these resources. So it's a, a good of, uh, I mean, it's a, a thing of, uh, of joy that this commission has come to stay and now uh, those of us who were involved in, draft, in drafting the commission since 2009 to the present era uh, day, we are happy that uh, our vision is now 
now has now come to reality. Well, how will you rate the capacity of the person who has been appointed to lead the commission? Do you think she is capable to uh, deliver the mandate of the commission? Yes, exactly. I Like yesterday, I mentioned that issue. I am still convinced that a BKW is the right material to handle that commission. This is somebody that is it's like a, the, 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 the egg she has laid. And now you are asking her to carry the egg. I hope she will carry it with the, all her heart. I know how she works. She works so diligently, and she highly qualified and competent to handle the affairs of the Diaspora Commission. This is something that she fought single-handedly in the House when she was a member of the National Assembly, and she was the chairperson for the for the Diaspora in the National Assembly, and she demonstrated the leadership you know, in terms of coordinating other members of the National Assembly, including my very good friend, uh, uh, Honorable Aminu Sheikh Shagari, who was also fighting with her, making sure that the Diaspora Commission, uh, you know, is uh, something that the Nigerians will be proud of. So um, I'm very happy that Abika Dabri has been uh, appointed. This is uh, similar to what we did last year in November, and uh, Honorable Abika Dabri Erewa was was kind enough to honor us with our presence. We had the Nigerian in Diaspora Organization annual general meeting, which we, uh, I hosted, and we had interactive session of this nature with, uh, with Nigerians. And Honorable uh, Abike Dabri was able to explain to the Nigerians about the functions of the uh, Diaspora Commission, which is what we have done today. And like I said, in the interactive session, is a very good uh, commission. It's, it's the right timing that it has come, and we we all have to work together to make it successful. Double into is rather real estate or investment in stocks or other okay. foreign exchange. But uh, the mining industry and the oil and gas, like you mentioned, they are still a bit locked to the elite. Elite, yeah. Okay. And you think you will be acceptable being able to penetrate it if you have the opportunity? Uh, well, I, I don't know if that will be possible unless the current government um, break the current the, the monopoly. monopoly over it right now. So it will be hard. Okay. So be hard. Um, uh, it's a challenge. So but specifically, you invest in real estate. In real estate, yes. Oh. Um, if we really need to get things done, the youth needs to be involved. And uh, considering like uh, the not too young Toronto bill that was passed recently, uh, uh, I would personally say that it's, uh, uh, I mean, it's a very good thing, but for the fact that uh, most of us cannot get a job now. So we are not really after the job, right? but we want to help the government to get the job done. And that is why some of us have come together and be like, okay, we instead of complaining about the way our leaders are leading us, let us look for a way by which we can contribute our quota and change the system and change things in Nigeria. And uh, we are working together with Nigerian youth in the diaspora. We have members in, uh, uh, in New York. We have members across the diaspora in different countries. And we're also working with the youth in Nigeria because we don't live in Nigeria, right? So if we need to get things done, we work with these people back home. So we, we, we are working together with Nigeria, like I said, and uh, everything is working smoothly. And uh, they are feeding us back what is going on in the country. And we're giving them our own life. Like I take like what we want to do and I want to do it. So we just work together simultaneously basically. The investment opportunities across all sectors in Nigeria. So I didn't come to pitch one sector to um, the Nigerian diaspora. I came to pitch the entire Nigerian investment opportunity space. It cuts across sectors and it cuts across even people. I mentioned when I spoke that Nigeria's biggest wealth, Nigeria's biggest opportunity in reality is not, you don't really see it when you look at the disaggregation of GDP. It's not a sector, it is the people, it is the young people of Nigeria. And I mentioned that um, in the age range from 0 to 14, 35% of Nigerians that fall you know, within that uh, category. Um, and if you, on that 91% of Nigerians, many people don't realize that 91% of Nigerians are actually below the age of 50. That's, um, that's a very, very high number. In many ways, Nigeria belongs to the youth. 
in the age range from 15 to 35, 36% of Nigerians fall in that age category. That's a huge number. You know, 73, about 73 million old people. Um, so the implication is that when you look at the investment opportunities in Nigeria, just look at the sectors where there are gaps between where we are and where we should be. We don't look at those gaps as challenges. We look at them instead as opportunities. It's like um, a starting point for the takeoff of the Diaspora Commission. So the suggestions, the input was very, very worth it. But the key thing again is the United Nations for the Diaspora. And then working together. They, they have to own the commission. We have to, you know, work together and ensure that, you know, everything said here materializes. The key thing is uh, uh, leadership, uh, structure, as well as, you know, just working together with the diaspora to ensure that we achieve our goals, which is how do they work, you know, with us to develop Nigeria. So there are many areas that uh, we need to work on. So for me, this is like uh, a platform. This is like um, a field of ideas and suggestions as well to, to make the commission work, which is very, very timely and very strategic. So, the issue is uh, the issue is not uh, creating more agencies; it's creating what is essential. What is essential, and we believe the um, commission is uh, is not only essential; it's not only necessary, but it's but it's essential insofar as. We want to harness, which uh, is the target one. We want to harness the uh, resources available as far as the diasporans are concerned. So this, the funding will come. There are those that will, uh, you know, in every, every uh, funding by government, there are areas that are very necessary, you spend more. There are areas that are not very necessary, you spend less. So this will take care of itself. Um, you see, this is an outreach commission, you understand, and all are at stake, you understand. They need, they need to be united. The commission is there to unite them, to bring them together. It will definitely do. You know, initially we didn't have a point of reference, you know, where to go to. Now we have one. And I want to comment on the funding he talked about. If you go to read the act at the back, there is something on finances there. He, you need to go like the advice, read the whole document. You will find out everything. I believe the people need to bring the just together to be united, and the commission is there to do that. So what role do you think the diaspora can play in the development? Of Nigeria, what you have seen them doing, what you Yeah, it, it is uh, to, be, to, to, to be willing to contribute, you know, to the development that is happening back home. Contribution in terms of their wealth of experience, contribution in terms of uh, their resources, human and uh, capital, so that they can also add to the developmental agenda of Nigeria and again to become partners with government through the missions, the embassy, and among Nigerians. So it is important that uh, they know that development is not one man's issue. It, everybody has to come together. We must have one agenda, we must pursue that goal together. That is a role that they can play in developing our nation. Cooperate, collaborate, and unite to partner with government and with all agencies of government that talks about development in our country. Nigerian Embassy partnering with NABN TV for informative, inclusive, and consultative diplomacy fulfilling diasporan needs. NABN, New Africa Broadcasting Network.